So this problem is very similar to the problem you did on the lab. Um, there are different values, but the principles are the same. So I'm just going to kind of go through them um, with this information. So in this case, we have a piece of aluminum that is really large. It's 80 grams. That's its mass. It's hot. Maybe it's been um, you know, the same way you guys did. You heat it up. So its temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. And we know its specific heat is told to us as 0 0.90 joules per gram degree Celsius. And this is dropped into some water with a mass of 200 grams. And it has a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius and a specific heat of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. So this really hot metal, we'll make it red because that's, of course, what hot things look like. So we'll throw it into the water. And what's going to happen? Well, some of the heat or hopefully all of the heat from the metal is going to enter the water, cooling the metal and warming up the water. And the big assumption here is that Q of the metal equals Q of the water, and not, you actually have to be more specific, the absolute value of these two. In other words, one would be negative and one would be positive, but we're just interested in the actual magnitudes of these. So that's the equation we're going to be working with. And so in our heads, we should start thinking about what a final temperature is going to be. The water is at 21 and the metal is at 100. It's going to be somewhere in between. So in our head, let's just come up with a number. It can be completely wrong, but let's say it was 30. So if it's 30 degrees, that's going to help us write this equation. So Q of the metal, it's the mass, right? So Q equals M times C times delta T. So we're going to take the mass of the metal, 80 grams, times specific heat of the metal, 0 0.90. In fact, I'm just going to leave off units. We're going to assume the units are the same throughout. So it's going to be 80 times 0 0.90 times the change in temperature of the metal. Now here's what we have to think. We don't know the final temperature really. I just made up this 30. So what is the real final temperature? It's really going to be something we'll call x. So how do we calculate the final temperature? Well, if it were 30, the final temperature would simply be 100 minus 30. Right? It would be 70 degrees. However, it's not 30 really, so I'm going to replace that 30 instead with x. So the change in temperature of the metal is 100 minus x. And we're going to leave that as is. And now I'm going to write on the other side the Q of the water. So that's going to be 200 times 4.18 times the change in temperature of the water. Now, the change in temperature of the water, you might be tempted to write 21 minus x, but we really want to keep these changes in temperature positive because these are both kept positive. That's what these absolute value symbols are. And think about it. If x were 30, 21 minus 30 is going to give me a negative number. So we cannot do that. So again, I picked x to be 30 just to make this easier to visualize. If the final temperature were 30, the change in temperature would be, we'd say, OK, 30 minus 21. That would give us the change in temperature, which would be 9. But again, it's not really 30, it's x. So the change in temperature of the water, we're going to write as x minus 21. So notice x is on uh, the right of the subtraction sign here, but it's on the left here. And that's how this sort of works out. So at this point, it's just an algebra problem. Um, once we get this set up, it's just a matter of solving for x. So if I do that, 80 times 0.9, I get 72 equals 100 minus x. And that equals, so 200 times 4.18 gives me 836x minus 21. And now I'm going to distribute. So 72 times 100 is 7200 minus 72x. That's going to equal 836x minus, so 836 times 21. So that's going to be minus 17,556. I'm going to get like terms on each side, so I'm going to add 72x to both sides. So 836 plus 72. On this side, I'm going to get 908x. I'm also going to add 17,556. 17,556. So 7,200 plus 17,556. I get 24,756 equals 908x. All right, so I'll solve that for x. I'll divide on each side. And I get that x equals 27.26 degrees Celsius. And this should hopefully seem reasonable, because remember, water is notoriously hard to raise in temperature compared to metals. 
So it's much closer to the temperature of the water. But what we can do to make sure this is right is we can actually go back and, and do this. Do this out as an actual problem to check our final answer. So in other words, let's pretend we know all this now. So what is the metal? The metal is 80 grams. Mass of 8 times specific heat is 0.9. Now, what's the change in temperature of the metal? So if it's going from 100 to 27.26, I can calculate that. 27.26 and 72.74. And that should equal the mass of the water, 200, times the specific heat of the water, times the change in temperature of the water, which is 6.26. And if those are pretty close to equal, then we've done our problem right. So if I calculate this out, the left side is 52,037.3, and my right side of my equation is 5,233.4. So that's pretty close. I must have rounded somewhere um, to, to make this a little off, but that's a good way to check our final answer. So um, that's my recommendation for these types of problems, and uh, all right.